remember in the 70s as a student paying a visit to Speaker's Corner in Hyde Park one Sunday afternoon. As you know, you get all sorts of eccentrics on their soapboxes letting off steam about this and that. My attention, however, was caught by one guy pacing up and down, holding up a huge placard on which was written, Things are getting worse. But for the believing Christian, our failures won't be the defining feature of our lives. In fact, quite the opposite, they can be watershed moments which restore our equilibrium. Last Sunday I mentioned how easy it was to slip into the habit of unguarded talk. But even if this is our Achilles heel, it's not the end of the world. With the help of God we can change and have a better outlook on life and on people. Isaiah and Peter acknowledge areas of failure in their lives in the readings today. They don't seem content with the way they are, but the Lord looks beyond their failings and sees latent goodness in their hearts. With the call of Isaiah and Peter, it's good to know that God is not a perfectionist. Yes, God is perfect, but he's not a perfectionist, especially when it comes to choosing people for his mission. Sure, he wants us to be aware of our shortcomings, but not bogged down by them. Isaiah, in the first reading, is painfully aware that he is a man of unclean lips. Could that mean that he swore a lot or used bad language or told vulgar jokes? Whatever it was, he feels quite distressed about it. He calls himself a wretched man. But then, having acknowledged his wretched state, the angel of the Lord comes and purifies his lips and he's back on track again. He's ready for mission because at the end of the reading he speaks to our Lord and says if you want to send somebody, here I am, send me now. I'm ready, I'm back on track, I'm a new man. St. Peter in the Gospel also acknowledges failure even as a fisherman, summed up in the words we fished hard all night long and caught nothing. But in deference to Jesus, but against his own better judgment, he is willing to pay out the nets. To me, this suggests he's ready for something new to happen in his life. He hasn't long to wait. He is completely overwhelmed by the catch. Aware of his own unworthiness, he falls on his knees before Jesus and begs him to leave. Peter feels unworthy to be in the Lord's company. He feels embarrassed. He's more or less saying to our Lord, You're too good for me. But Jesus tells him not to be afraid. A great mission lies ahead for him. From catching fish, he'll soon be netting souls for God's kingdom. Our Lord is saying the same to us as he said to Peter. Don't be downhearted by your personal sins and limitations. Does this mean that we're gone soft on sin? Of course not. Repentance is a lifelong task and we can never let up on it. Being aware of our own failures will keep us from standing in judgment over others. On the contrary, if we've battled with a particular sin, then we're best placed to help others going through a similar ordeal. The best people, for instance, to help alcoholics are alcoholics themselves who have grappled with the addiction and now are free from it. The devil does his best to undermine our faith in Christ and wallow in a sort of self-loathing. Peter said to Jesus, Depart from me, I am a sinful man. Far from it, Jesus did the opposite and asked Peter to be part of his inner circle. His failures didn't put the Lord off. Ours won't either. Thank you all for listening and God bless you all.